And welcome to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College for some NJCAA College Baseball. The Montgomery College Raptors welcoming the Wolfpack from Westmoreland County Community College. I'm Michael Brown alongside my partner Marcus Rosano. This is actually the second game of the doubleheader uh, that we're able to join you for and we get a real good look there on the bench there of Greg Brown who was the winning pitcher in the first game. And uh, we are just about set to get going with game two uh, of our doubleheader. And um, let's take a look at the, uh, the starting lineup for uh, the visitors from Westmoreland. And a couple of names that will jump out at us, Marcus. Uh, Brett Valeri Valerani. Brett Valerani pitched a great game in game one in the Montgomery College win. Um, he, was a, he was a tough luck loser, I guess you could say, because he pitched an excellent game in only his third start of the season, and he gave up a long home run to today's Montgomery, the game two Montgomery College starter, Jamil uh, Kanan. Um, so Valerani, uh, he had his arm in ice after the game, as he should have, and now he's, now he's DH in, in game two. I mean, these guys don't take a, a minute off. <laughs> no, they don't. And uh, he's, he's also an outfielder. I doubt we'll see him out there after his effort in the first game, but uh, he was a tough luck loser. Um, the uh, head coach of uh, Westmoreland is Mike Draggy. He's in his uh, 26th year. There you see him on the right. Um, he just won his 700th career game at Westmoreland, and he is the one and only coach that the Westmoreland program has ever had. He's talking to Joel Yandrick, who is the hitting coach. Uh, the other coaches are Terry Malarski and Ken Maka. And uh, now let's take a look at uh, Montgomery College. As you, as you mentioned, uh, we probably can't see him because he's probably down in the bullpen warming up. But the uh, starting pitcher for the Raptors in the second game will be uh, Jamil Kanan. Yeah, Jamil has three starts this year. He's appeared in 13 games because the Coach Rasher likes to use him out of the bullpen. Uh, but he's got three starts this season. He's 2-2. Two and two. Uh, He's got two saved. It saves. He's got a complete game. Uh, he's thrown 33 innings pitch. He's given up 50 hits, has a 7 ERA. Um, so he's coming into his own as a, as a pitcher. Um, but in, as we saw in game one, he can swing the bat, and he also plays third base. Um, but he's really trying to find himself as a established starter, not just a guy out of the bullpen for Coach Rasher. Yeah, as a matter of fact, Dan Rasher told me that eventually he sees him as the team's closer. This season, they don't really have a closer. Of course, last year, they had the uh, the beautiful setup yeah. uh, closer situation mm -hmm. with Eddie O'Neill and Kay Manhattan. Yeah, that was the ideal situation because, like Rasher always tells us, if you, last year you get through five, and then in a doubleheader when you only have to play seven innings, you give it to Ed O'Neill and Kay Manhattan for your sixth and your seventh. And his uh, battery mate today, who he was just – talking with there he comes back into the uh, picture is Alex Fogelman uh, they're giving uh, Cole Wyckoff uh, the second game off of course he caught the entire first game uh, for the Raptors so once again the Raptors won the opener two to one both pitchers went the distance uh, Greg Brown getting the win for Montgomery College and um, Valerani was the tough luck loser uh, for Westmoreland, that win makes uh, Greg Brown four and one on the season now, and uh, he's pitched very well of late. So, and I don't even think he had his best best stuff, Michael, in, in game one, and uh, he ran into some serious trouble early in the game and worked out of an incredible jam. I think it was the th uh, third inning, and he only uh, he only allowed that one run. And he battled through it, and MC played some timely defense, and Greg Brown really pitched smart in this game. And then they just waited for uh, Jamil Kanan uh, to hit the long ball, and uh, they finally uh, got to uh, Valerani. Well, while we're waiting for this one to start, let's talk a little bit about the importance of these games. Um, 
This is a very important doubleheader uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, it's sophomore day here for Montgomery College. It's also the last regular season home game for the Raptors before the postseason. But perhaps most importantly, both of these games have a, a direct impact on the Region 20 tournament. You know, that's right. I mean, both teams are going to be competing in just what, two weeks in the NJCA Region 20 tournament. Uh, the seedings are on the line today. So with MC getting a win in game one, um, that does a lot because these two teams are neck and neck in the standings, Westmoreland and MC. And one thing about the seedings in the Region 20 tournament, this year uh, Prince George's Community College is stacked. And we've seen them over the last few years start to build that program, start to build a real rivalry like we've always wanted between MC and PG. And guess what? This year – Teams don't want to play PG, so having a good seed headed into the Region 20 tournament, you avoid PG in the first round, and that's what I think both these coaches you know, want to do. Yeah, so this game is definitely about seeding. Uh, but, of course, when you look at the, the, the stats, the matchup of the stats head-to-head, -head, you really have to give the, the nod to the Raptors because they dominate most of the stats. Yeah, when we're looking at the head-to-head -head stats up uh, MC has 40 stolen bases on the season. Uh, they've only been caught stealing three times, so they're a young team, but they can really run. Uh, Westmoreland, on the other hand, only has six stolen bases as a team, um, and they're not. And MC's not just speed; they got some power. They got some pop in their bats. They've got 19 home runs, and as we've mentioned already, uh, we saw Game One won by a home run. They've got 19 home runs on the season. Westmoreland only has six on the season. Um, and then if you look at the pitching stats, Westmoreland has a team ERA of seven. Now, sure, Montgomery College doesn't have a sparkling ERA, um, but they're about a run and a half better um, as a team ERA. So, yeah, on paper, and as we're looking right here, on paper it looks like Montgomery College, uh, you know, it has the better team. Except, the, I mean, batting average MC is really down. I think Dan Rasher was uh, was targeting uh, hitting 300 as a team. I'm not sure if they're gonna, if they're going to get there. Um, but, yeah, uh, MC can steal bases and they can hit the home run. And we're going to take a short break, and we'll be right back with the start of the game. Get to MC, and we'll get you going. We're back in the uh, Germantown campus of Montgomery College, all set for the second game of our doubleheader. The Montgomery College Raptors taking on the Westmoreland Community College Wolfpack in a Region 20 uh, contest. Good look there at the Raptors and the Raptors bench. Raptors took the first game of the doubleheader 2-1. to one. Uh, it is sophomore day, and uh, we're going to take a look at some of the footage of that uh, presentation. There's Naha Garcia. So all the uh, graduating, Max Maloney, all the uh, graduating, uh, there's Brock, Brock Antononi. Uh, all the graduating sophomores were honored before the game. There's uh, Pat Burke and uh, Tejada and Aaron Brooks. And finally, there is uh, Greg Brown, the winning pitcher of game one with his parents. So good look at all the graduating sophomores from the Raptors baseball program. And that's not many sophomores. 
Yeah, we were talking about how young this team is. And, that you know, that's something that Dan Rasher, uh, in, over the last few years, we've seen last year is such a sophomore-laden program. Uh, this is a whole new this is a whole new ball game, you know, no pun intended here, where even, even your veterans are moving to new positions. You had Naha Garcia playing in the outfield last year, and now he comes back and he plays shortstop this year. So all the way around, uh, there's, there's new faces. And, you know, the fact is they haven't put it all together. You know, if you look at their if you look at their record by this time, you know they're pushing 25 wins. Um, right now, they have what 18 wins. So, it's the team batting average isn't there. Uh, the th pitching is inexperienced, other than what we saw in Game One, Greg Brown, um, and quite frankly, they're not satisfied at all. Especially Coach Silk, John Silk, who uh, who uh, coaches the outfield. He's not happy with their fielding. So again, that is not characteristic of a Dan Rasher team. No, and I think it is a factor, uh, a big factor is the uh, the youth and the inexperience. And uh, we get a look at uh, Jamil Kane, and his last outing was pretty solid against uh, a very strong Hagerstown team. Hagerstown came in 29-9 and nine on the season, um, and the Raptors oh, knocked him off. Yeah, Hagerstown is always a, a, a tough program in Maryland Juco. You could see... Jamil Kane in with that sidearm delivery. Makes it tough on a right-handed batter. So Kanan is a, a big, strong fella. He's six foot three. And uh, he will uh, he will be on the hill here in the second game against Westmoreland. There's a good look at Dan Rasher. Of course, Dan is uh, in his 12th season, look at that record, Marcus. Just like Coach Draghi on the other side, that is Montgomery College baseball. I mean, when you when you see high school players from around the around not just Montgomery County but around Maryland, um, they know who Dan Rasher is and they know what the MC baseball program means. Well, he's had quite a run of success. Uh, this is his 12th season. The Raptors have won the Region 20 championship. 11 times, uh, or I'm sorry, nine times in uh, 11 years. Uh, they've been to the World Series nine times in the 11 years. and uh, But he's got his work cut out for him this year because, as you alluded to earlier, uh, PG, who, of course, is in Region 20, is loaded. All right, we're, we're set to get underway, and Dakota Sachs is leading off for Westmoreland and first pitch strike from Jamil Kanan. And Sachs had a double in the first game. He bounces it to third. Burke, long throw for the out. Yeah, it's a good way to start the game for Kanan as his first batter was a lefty. Lefties get a much better vantage point against uh, a delivery like Jamil Kanan. And that brings up number nine, Garrett Stevenson. And he's in right field in game two. Played shortstop in the first game. Kanan comes a little bit sidearm there, Marcus. One ball, one strike. We are underway here in game two of the doubleheader, Montgomery College against Westmoreland. The weather turned out surprisingly nice. I'll we tell had a you washout what. this weekend. It really did. They they were predicting gloom and doom for today. Uh, it was supposed to be 40 days and 40 nights of rain. Well, you had that yesterday for the uh, the Dundalk game. Yeah, we, we sure did. Uh, we were out here shooting. We'll talk a little bit about that uh, later on in the ball game. It was, it was a shame because it was a uh, baseball reunion day. And that's a fair ball, and he's out at first. So two up, two down. 
Nice start for young Jamil Kanan from Springbrook High School. And that brings up Brett Valerani, who is the, uh, as we keep saying, the hard luck loser in the first game, pitched very well. And as, as the pitcher in the first game, he did not hit. Nice fastball on outside corner. There's a line drive to center field, and nice catch out there by Chris Amparo, and that's the end of the half inning. And uh, we'll keep it right here as we uh, get ready to set the lineup for Westmoreland and Montgomery College. But after one half inning of play, no score. So let's take a look at the batting order for uh, batting lineup for Montgomery College. And good look at it. Uh, Couple of names pop out at you there, Marcus. Well, Naha Garcia and Greg Brown are the captains this year as well. They should sophomores. Uh, Greg Brown definitely has some some pop in his bat, as uh, we were talking about in game one, where you saw him hit a hit a long home run, and he's a lefty power hitter. Uh, Naha Garcia obviously sets the table at the top. Good speed. Uh, Aaron Brooks, another player with with good speed. Um, so. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, different names in that lineup. Brock Antignoni is another player with good speed, but you're basically going off of Greg Brown and Naha Garcia at your one and your three in that lineup. And, of course, Antignoni leads the team in RBIs, so uh, he's been a big contributor. Good look at Antignoni right there. Love that number 13. That was always <laughs> mine. Uh, by the way, our umpires um, are Jim Downey, Behind the place, plate, and on the bases today, Dave Dieselhorse. Those will be the umpires for game two. On the hill for uh, for Westmoreland is uh, Hanson, uh, number 14, Noah Hanson. He was a pinch hitter in the first game. Noah Hansen has appeared in five games this year, three starts. He's 0-3. Um, he's pitched 19.2 innings and given up 30 hits, 20 runs, 15 strikeouts, 10 walks, and that comes in at an ERA of 7.78. And we should mention the other coaches on Dan Ratcher's uh, coaching staff for the Raptors. Um, his assistants are John Silk, who is coaching first base right now. Andy Hoy, Justin Key before, and Casey Leister. And those, those coaches are another reason why players uh, want to come to Montgomery College. That is such a, a mainstay. All those names you just mentioned from Coach Hoy and Coach Silk and Justin, I mean, this is a, this is a coaching staff that's been together for years. And Casey Leister, uh, who is working with the pitching staff this year, is a former Raptor player. Actually, he was a Griffin. Uh, he played one year on the Rockville campus back when we had a uh, separate campuses on separate uh, on on uh, separate teams on separate campuses, and he also played a year here at Germantown under Dan Rasher. And that's interesting because those were the years where Montgomery College could play Montgomery College in a doubleheader. Just a couple of years ago, of course, the college united under one mascot, and we've been Raptors ever since. There's Naha Garcia, and he lines a base hit into right field to start things off. Nice piece of hitting by your leadoff man. Tailing away fastball from the lefty. He just pokes it over the second baseman's head into right field. Leadoff man, and he's dangerous on the base paths. And that brings up Aaron Brooks who's been one of the hottest hitters uh, for the Raptors. He doubled and walked uh, in the first game. Let's so he was one for two. Let's see what kind of pickoff move Hanson has. A little Way tougher for, for Garcia to get a good jump against the lefty. And the Raptors don't see that many lefties. So we'll see if that uh, 
causes him any trouble at the uh, at the plate. Brooks uh, runs well. He uh, he has six stolen bases this year. Garcia comes in at ten stolen bases. He leads the team. Nice on base percentage for Naha as well. Almost forty one. He's got him. Got him in a rundown. And they're gonna get him. So Naha Garcia picked off first by Hansen. And that was a nice move by Hansen. He took another look at home plate, lifted the leg and threw it first. At that time, Garcia was fooled and off the second he was going. Don't see that too often. There it is. I mean, he totally decoyed him with that look back to home. And there is a long drive to center field. It's off the base of the wall. Brooks motoring into second, and he'll stay there. So that pickoff uh, really played a, a serious role there. Raptors yeah. probably would have been on the board. You're right, Michael, with uh, Garcia's speed. The center fielder for Westmoreland didn't even have a chance, so Garcia would have been coming around. That is a costly mistake. But another good piece of hitting by Brooks. We saw him in game one hit another ball deep to center field. All right, that brings up Greg Brown. Um, he's the DH in this game. He, of course, the winning pitcher in the first game. He was 0 for 3. He pitched and DH'd in the first game. He's tied for the most home runs on the Raptors with three. Great on base percentage. He's, he's on base 421. Swing's a great bat. Of course, as you mentioned, he's one of the co-captains. Uh, also plays first base. And of course, since he's a Raptor, he works on the field before and after game because all the players do that. And they've done a pretty nice job with what was, when I got here and you know we were here early in the morning and this field did not look like it does right now. No, that's for sure. When, when we got here at 6.30 this morning. <laughs> you were here um, way early than me. <laughs> yeah, or actually it was, yeah, it was 6.30. The, the tarp had several inches of water on it. We got a lot of rain yesterday and last night. But uh, Dan Rasher and his crew of coaches and players, they do a heck of a job on this field. Brown walks and, and Brooks moves up because the catcher dropped the ball. Smart play by Brooks, saw that ball in the dirt. So that puts a runner in scoring for uh, position for Brock Antononi. He's the second baseman for the Raptors. Raptors putting the lefty in a tough spot early. And Antononi leads the team with 31 RBIs. And he swings through the first one. Antononi is a transfer from Hartford Community College. Said he came here because of the great program and the opportunity. Nice take on that curveball. Slow left-handed curveball. Breaks on the inner half of the plate, but off the corner. Pops it up. That uh, could be trouble in the right. Let's see if Brooks tags up. He does. Here he comes, and he beats the throw easily. Throw is cut off. So Antononi picks up an RBI with a sack fly to right, and the Raptors are on the board one to nothing. It's all Antononi really needed to do. And one of the things that Coach Rasher was talking to you about in the interviews that you did with the coaching staff is – the Raptors need to learn a little more patience at the plate. Trying to hit a grand slam <laughs> every time you get to the plate is not is not a good way to uh, manufacture runs. All right, so that brings up um, number 16, 
Pat Burke, and you know this guy. He works in uh, in the communications office. Works for uh, in the development uh, area as a student employee. He's one of the graduating sophomores. He grounds it between first and second, and he's out. But the Raptors do get on the board. And uh, after one complete inning of play, the Raptors on top. One to nothing. We'll be right back with the top half of the second after a quick break. Hi, I'm Tim Kirkjian with ESPN, and you're watching Raptor Baseball on MCTV. And welcome back to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. And yes, folks, that was ESPN's and Montgomery County's very own Tim Kirkjian uh, giving us a little shout out there. Uh, Mr. Kirkjian was a recent visitor to the Rockville campus of Montgomery College. I had a chance to cover the event and also sit for a one-on-one -on -one interview with him. And we'll be showing you some excerpts from that uh, event all game long. It was, a, it was a real pleasure for me to get to talk to him. Yeah, that's a fascinating guy. I mean, he knows so much about baseball. He hasn't missed a World Series in, what did he say, almost 30 years? Yeah. I, mean, I can't imagine that. It's yeah. amazing. He's seen every World Series game for like 30-some years and um, every All-Star game. And, and, and the thing, he, he admits that he gets paid to watch baseball every day of the year. And right. I mean, how cool is that? He, he loves his job. So that brings up uh, Gerhardt, who is the DH. And in the first game, he was 0 for 3. Grounded out and popped out twice. But he is one of their better hitters. Yeah, Gerhardt's hitting 340. Bounces a foul. He's 17 for 50 on the season. You know, the the, uh, the stats for Westmoreland, them being up in a little bit, almost western Pennsylvania, they've got a lot of snow. So they, they don't even have as many at-bats, not even close as, as Montgomery College. No, they've had a lot of weather problems. Um, they have not played as many games as MC. Gerhardt, however, is their leading home run hitter with two. Of course, the Raptors don't have the big boppers this year like they've like they've had in the past, particularly last year. You had uh, Brooks Carson, Pedro Mateo, who were a threat to hit it out every time they uh, stepped into the box. Um, this year, not so much, although the Raptors do have 19 home runs. There's a strike three right on the outside corner by Jamil Kanan. Gerhardt is uh, not happy about that. A little disgusted with that call. Let's take another look. Well, that looked pretty good to me. And that br brings up Stanosik. He grounds it to third. Burke's going to have to barehand it. A long throw. Can't get him. Yeah, that had base hit written all over it. Yeah, that was a tough one. And Stanosik had two hits in the first game, so he's having a pretty good day. And that brings up Ackerman, Branson Ackerman. He was 0 for 3 in the first game. Another nice batting average on the season. He's 13 for 35. That's a 371 clip. As a home run. And he's playing first base in the second game. 
Raptors on top. We're in the top of the second. This is a doubleheader format for the NJCAA, so this game will be seven innings. Here's a called strike on the knees. Good look at Jamil Kanan. Big fella is six foot three. And he comes sidearm a little bit. That There's length has to even be more difficult for a right-handed batter because the ball's coming basically from your back, you know, coming crossing over, you know, the front of your body. Right. You just got to you gotta put those cleats in the ground and say, I'm going to stick in here because eventually he's going to get to the plate. And it hit him. Or you get hit if you stick your cleats in the ground. <laughs> <laughs> that brings up Garcia. He had an excellent first game. He was one for three. He doubled, scored on a wild pitch, hit the ball hard. Uh, every time up except for his last appearance when he struck out. Kevin came into the game, game one, struggling, hitting 178 on the season, eight for 45. He went to high school in Miami, Florida. So going to Western Pennsylvania from Miami, Florida had to be a little bit of a culture shock. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's a big change. He's used to playing uh, baseball 365 days a year in Florida. Everybody's moving. So Kanan in a little bit of trouble here in the top of the second. Got two on. One out. And Coach Draghi had his uh, had his runners moving there with the pitch. It'll make Kanan pay a little more attention. Ooh, boy, that ball almost took a head off. Wow. In the Raptors dugout. Woo. You gotta, you gotta stay awake over there. <laughs> and cameraman Paul did not even flinch. No, you know I'm pretty sure he didn't see it, but he didn't flinch. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, it's a one thing. and two count to Garcia, and that was uh, goes to second with the pickoff attempt. He's in easily. A nice day here on uh, the Germantown campus, and strangely enough, it's not windy. And that is a rare occasion up here. They don't call this ballpark Windy Hill for nothing. That's right. It usually works to the advantage of the Raptors when the ball uh, gets up into that, that little Windy Hill jet stream, and that could play some tricks on some visiting outfielders. There's a line drive single into left. It gets out there in a hurry. They're going to hold the runner. Well, that's what Garcia wanted to do. He kept fouling it off, fouling it off to the uh, left side. Nice piece of hitting. So now the bases are loaded, and there's just one down. And that, that brings up Miranda. Gustavo Miranda is hitting 213 on the season, 10 for 47. He's got a home run, 14 RBIs, scored four runs. And he's got a big spot right now against the right-handed Kanan. Comes inside with it, and it misses. And here comes head coach Dan Rasher for a little confab on the mound. A lot of times in this situation, he's just going to talk to him about, he's, he's not just going to talk to Jamil Kanan. He's going to talk to everybody about what needs to happen here. And the biggest thing is, let's get an out.
I'm sure he's had quite a few meetings on the mound with this team this year just because of how young they are. There's a lot of moving parts when you have the bases loaded and it's such a young team. But like you said, get the out. It's only the second inning. So Miranda up there with the bases loaded. He uh, was uh, a pinch hitter in the first game. He got a pinch hit to, to actually put the tying run on base, but they were not, not able to bring him home. Raptors won the first game two to one. So one ball, one strike, bases loaded. And he swings right through that one. Nice pitch. So Kane in ahead in the count now. That ball seemed to tail away from the left-handed hitter a little bit. Ground ball, foul. Down the first baseline. Miranda's another Miami, Florida kid. So he and Garcia, both out of Miami. The rest of the roster for Westmoreland is all Pennsylvania kids. That's going to miss the corner. So the count runs full now. Bases loaded, full count, one out, top of the second. Raptors with an early 1-0 lead. Ground ball, second base. Going to go to one, first for one, and that's all they could get. Hey, that's a good play by Antignoni. That was that was not an easy play. He had to go into the uh, into the hole, and just made the smart play. If that ball gets through, you know you're talking a 2-1 lead for Westmoreland. So, Stanisek scores the run. And that ties it up at one apiece. And that brings up Neal, the catcher. Brady Neal. He swings through it. He hits it to right field and trouble there to catch it to retire the side. So Kanan uh, wriggles out of the jam and uh, does a good job there to limit the damage to one. So after an inning, a half of play, we're all tied up at one. And you know, we talked about it a little bit earlier, but yesterday was a very special day here at the ballpark on Windy Hill when the MC Alumni Association and MC Athletics held a baseball reunion for former players. There were well over 50 former players and their families uh, in attendance, and it was a celebration of their time playing at MC, either as a Raptor or a Knight, back when uh, Rockville had a baseball team as well, or as a Griffin. Uh, because as you remember, Marcus, uh, before the college unified under one mascot, uh, Germantown had their own team. They were the Griffins. So it was a really nice reunion. We see some, uh, some shots from yesterday's uh, ceremony. It was a good turnout. You had uh, players from the 70s, 80s, 90s, and the 2000s in attendance. And uh, that, that shot right there with all of those names as, as all Americans, I mean, that's just a testament uh, to what this program has been. And, you know, even though right now we're the Raptors, but there is tradition with Montgomery College Ra uh, Rockville with, as the Knights. And then Dan Rasher gets to the Griffins and, and builds a Germantown absolutely powerhouse, uh, you know, a, a national uh, powerhouse. You know, and it's nice to see so many players uh, came back, basically just, you know, to give back to, to MC and say, hey, you know, this is a great program, and, you know, and we're proud of, uh, of what we did here. So uh, it, was, it was a great day. The only downer was uh, the weather and – because it did rain all day, but still it was a great turnout, and it was really nice to see those guys uh, back here. So 
Anyway, uh, Tejada leading off for the Raptors. Uh, he was two for two uh, in the first game. And um, one, of the, uh, one of the graduating sophomores. Josh came into the day hitting 224, 11 for 49 on the season. Got a couple of home runs. He also uh, came around to score on Kanan's uh, homer, and he finds a hole there into the left field, seeing eye single. Excellent piece of hitting. He saw a hanging curve ball that kind of broke right into his own. So he's now having a perfect Sunday. He's three for three with a run scored. That brings up uh, Darren Preble, the right fielder for the Raptors. Um, he was one for two in the first game. Singled uh, to right field and flied out to center. And played a very solid uh, outfield in the, in the first game as well. He's having a good season. 25 for 94, has scored 31 runs and has 15 RBIs. A couple of home runs. Been very productive. Gets on base a lot, almost 46%. So that's the kind of player you like to have in the order for you. So Hanson now. Tejada on with, with nobody out. Tejada not really a threat to steal. Of course, after Hanson picked off Garcia in the first, the Raptors may take a slightly Shorter lead. Have to respect that move now. That's right. Anyway, yesterday was a great day. It was great to see all the old Raptors and Knights and Griffins back. Uh, and it was very gratifying to uh, Dan Rasher to, to see such a great turnout, particularly with the weather the way it was. Uh, it really didn't put a damper on things, despite the fact that it rained all day long. And he hits Preble. That got him pretty well. You could hear that one in the booth. <laughs> you can hear his teammates talking to him. It doesn't hurt. <laughs> Easy for you to say. <laughs> yeah, you just didn't get hit by an 80-mile fastball, 80-mile-per-hour fastball. All right, that brings up Chris Amparo. Another one of the many freshmen on the, on the uh, Raptors roster. John F. Kennedy grab. He lays one down, fouls it back, trying to move the runners up. Chris comes into today hitting 265, nine hits and 34 at bats, has a home run. And he will pitch as well. The Raptors have only a couple of players who are exclusively pitchers. And I yep. wonder if he just missed a sign. Because that's a uh, you missed a sign discussion. Type conversation. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I don't think that he would be bunting at this point. It's early. There's a lot of runs to be had today. And there's nobody out. And he lines it into left field for a base hit. Tejada had to hold up, but he comes rolling around third and scores standing up. Amparo goes into second on the throw, and Preble moves to third. So Amparo made up for missing that sign, didn't he? Nice piece of hitting right in the hole into left field, and around came Josh Tejada for a 2-1 Raptors lead. And there's still no outs, guys on second and third. And that brings up Fogelman, Alex Fogelman, the catcher. St. John's College grad. He takes it way outside. So Chris Amparo picks him up with an RBI to put the Raptors back on top two to one. There's a strike on the corner. 
talking to Coach Andy Hoy before the game. I asked him, how long are you going to go with Kanan today? And he said, we're going to try to get at least four in. There's a ground ball, goes into left field. In comes Preble. Here comes Amparo. He's going to score standing up. And rolling into second base is Alex Fogelman with a two RBI single. And that's basically Groundhog Day at two uh, consecutive pitches. Base hit to left field. Runners come around. Runner advances, the uh, batter advances to second on the throw. It's actually three singles to left field wow. here in the second inning. So a uh, two run single to left for Fogelman. Preble scores. Amparo running well scored. So it's now 4 1 Raptors. And that gets us back up to the top of the order and Naha Garcia. So the Raptors have already gone through the lineup once. Garcia singled his first time up, but was picked off. Naha gets to come back to his natural position of shortstop this year after playing out of necessity in the outfield last year. Boy, he was a tremendous outfielder last year. Uh, at some point today, I hope we get a chance to show you a catch he made in last year's district championship. Here it comes. Uh, I speak, and look what we get. It's amazing Watch his how catch. that works. And I mean full extension. That was in a big moment, too. So, and he just walked. So, a very productive second inning continues. Now there are two Raptors on. So, yeah, Garcia made the difficult trade. He was a high school shortstop. He made the transition to the outfield last year because he really wanted to play, and the Raptors had an established short, uh, shortstop last year. Worked very hard, became a starter, and then this year moved back into the infield. So showing his versatility and his desire, ability to do whatever is necessary. Brooks doubled to center his first time up. It's a dangerous hitter right now for Hanson because Brooks has hit the ball really hard today. Yeah, he has, and he's been hot. He's one for two in the first game. He had a ringing double here uh, and scored a run. Scored the Raptors' first run of the ball game. 321 coming into this afternoon's games. And as we said, he runs really well. He shows bunt. Umpires say he pulled it back just in time. So two balls, one strike. There's a strike that evens the count at two and two. Still nobody out. This all started with a uh, Tejada single to left. Raptors had three hits in a row, four hits in a row. And then, of course, Garcia walked. I'm sorry, Preble was hit by a pitch. And Brooks walks. That'll load him up. That's the patience that... Coach Dan Rasher has wanted to see. I mean, sure, he's talking about keeping the hands in the zone, staying in the hitting zone uh, much more than they have been, just trying to bang out base hits as opposed to hit the long ball. Um, but patience at the plate also means taking pitches. That was the third walk of the game already for Hanson. And there's a line drive into the gap. Center fielder does do a nice job to get over and get it. Fogelman scores. Uh, everybody else holds, so Fogelman scores the fifth run of the game, and the bases are still juiced. And a 
another dangerous hitter right after Greg Brown's RBI single, and that's Antignoni. And here comes Coach Draghi out to talk to Hanson. Antignoni flied out to right field, but that scored a run. Yeah, he had the sack fly in the first inning to knock in the first run of the game. I'm sorry, this is uh, Coach Mularski, and he is talking. He's not messing around. He talked directly to Hanson, delivered his message, about face, forward march. And that was, uh, that's Coach Terry Malarski, who's been with Coach Draghi uh, the entire time he's been at, uh, at Westmoreland, so 26 years. Antononi, of course, had the sack fly RBI in this game. He was one for three in the opener today. He takes a strike. Nice pitch. Base is loaded, nobody out. Four runs in in the inning, and the dangerous Brock Antononi at the plate. And he lines it foul down the third baseline. And Dan Rasher uh, dances out of the way. Light on his feet, Dan Rasher. <laughs> kind of like how he dances around uh, in pregame out on this infield. <laughs> Getting that field ready. Boy, he works hard. He does. There's a bouncer up the middle. And they bobble it. Everybody's safe. Here comes one run. Here comes two runs. As Garcia scores, Brooks scores. And that'll be a, a, a very costly error. And Coach Draghi out now to have a conversation. And I believe we're going to have a pitching change. We have to have a pitching change because this is the second visit to the mound in the inning. And he takes the ball from Noah Hansen, and that ends his day on the mound. So those two runs are unearned. But Hansen still responsible for both Antononi. Got Garrett Woodburn coming in to, to pitch. Sophomore from Bentleyville, Bentleyville, Pennsylvania. But that's a, a good look at Coach Draghi there. Big six spot for the Raptors here in the second inning. And uh, Woodburn has uh, appeared in six games, four as a starter. He's two and one on the season, uh, but he's got a pretty lofty ERA at uh, north of nine. Well, we mentioned that earlier that the ERA is extremely elevated for. The Wolf Pack. Coach Draghi says that they really don't have an ace, but I think uh, Valerani, who we saw, you know, he's been injured, so Valerani hasn't pitched, hasn't been the ace because he just hasn't pitched. Um, but after Valerani, they, it's obviously they've really struggled on the mound. Yeah, there's quite a fall off after him. He, he looked very, very good in the first game. Um, So the Raptors still have it going on here. Uh, Antononi at first, Greg Brown at third. And we've got six runs on the board and zero outs. And you got Josh Tejada coming up, who is, uh, hadn't made it out all day. But first we'll have Patrick Burke. Future communications professional, Patrick Burke. It's interesting, we have a left-handed batter in Patrick Burke and a right-handed reliever, which fits right in perfectly for the Raptors to add to the six-run spot here in the second. 
Burke is 0 for 1. He grounded out to second his first time up. Lefty swinger. Throw to first. Woodburn is a righty, of course. He'll be pitching out of the stretch. But he's in a tight jam. In the dirt. Nice job there by Neal to keep it in front of him. Yeah, that saved a run. Raptors with a six spot so far. And there goes Antononi. He's in there safely. So Brock Antononi with the stolen base. That's his uh, seventh steal of the year. Take a, another look there. Pretty close play, but he beat the throw clearly. Nice throw by Neil. Yeah, right on the base. And made it a bang, bang play. Yeah, he made it close. There's a pop-up foul. Here's the pitch. Burke fouls it straight back. Right at us. Woodburn throws a little harder than Hanson. Patrick Burke is um, a Virginia kid from West Springfield High School. Came to Montgomery College because he had heard about the program, knew knew about the success of uh, of the Dan Rasher program here at Montgomery College. Very happy he came here. As, as we talked about earlier, he's interning in the communications office in the development area. Marcus could wax poetic on the uh, development area, couldn't you, Marcus? Speaking of communications, he could have seen our games on, on YouTube or on, on, on our MCTV station. And there's a ground ball, and it gets through. And Brown scores. Here comes Antononi. He motors in as Pat Burke with a two-run single. Raptors having a great day with hitting uh, with runners in scoring position. They're now four for six hitting in, uh, with runners in scoring position, and we're only in the second inning. And the infield was in, and that RBI went right past the second baseman, Miranda. Nice piece of hitting by the lefty, Pat Burke. Eight Good. runs in the second inning. Wow, wow that's a big spot. And the Raptors aren't done yet. That brings up Josh Tejada. He's had two for two in the first game, one for one in the second. Oh, the Raptors, one of their biggest innings of the year. Tejada swings right through it. <laughs> there's that there's that patience Dan Rasher was talking about where that ball was was up and out. And uh, I think when that ball comes up around your eyes, they get really big and Josh couldn't hold off. Hey, his last time up, he singled. Actually, his last time up was this inning. <laughs> he started the, the whole thing with that single to left field as Burke uh, takes second on the uh, the ball getting away there from Neal. So the Raptors have batted around without the Wolfpack recording an out. Yeah. That just does not happen often in baseball. No, it does not. And of course, uh, Tejada scored the uh, first run of this uh, eight-run explosion. Found it right back into uh, Marcus's face there. <laughs> Luckily, there's a uh, a nice 
sturdy fence in front of us. That'll wake you up. Full count for Woodburn. Fouls it off. Nice pitch. High outside fastball. Count still full. Tejada hanging in. Takes it outside for ball four. Still nobody out. That brings up Darren Preble. He was hit by a pitch his first time up and scored. That's the fourth walk by uh, Westmoreland pitching and we've only completed one inning of play as far as they're concerned. Yeah, I'm seeing a lot of B's on my score sheet here. And those walks will kill you every time. And there's another ground ball into right field. Here comes Patrick Burke. He'll score easily. Tejada into third. And Preble takes second on the throw. So an RBI single by Preble. And the Raptors add to the total now. They put nine on the board here in the second inning. There's still nobody out. And they have runners on second and third. And that brings up Chris Amparo. Amparo had a single to left. Knocked in a run, and then he later scored. And the infield that, for the Wolfpack is in again. And I mean, I'm not going to argue with a guy who's won 700 games, but I'm thinking you got to get an out. <laughs> yeah, you need an out. <laughs> of course, double play is not really a likely option here. There's a strike on the corner. They need to stanch the bleeding with a with an out. If they get another run, that's going to be tough for that uh for the second inning light cuz it doesn't say 10. We're going to have to start using our fingers and toes in here because... Uh, I assume we're going to add a zero or we're going to keep it at nine. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice going to make the math tough. Throw so Amparo with an RBI and a run. There's a good look wow. at that scoreboard. It's getting a workout here in the second inning. And there it is. And there's the first out of the second inning as Amparo goes down swinging. So Woodburn gets the strikeout, and that brings up Fogelman. He had a single, knocked in two runs. He had a single to left, knocked in two runs, and then, of course, he later scored. So it's been a very productive inning for the Raptors. He takes a strike on the knees. Good pitch. Very good pitch. And the strike zone's getting a little more liberal as well. <laughs> as well it should. Uh, the umpire is no dummy. He realizes there are no lights here. <laughs> And he says, we may need to move this thing along. Now, there is a 10-run rule, even in a, a seven-inning seven game. And that would be um, after five innings. Should one team lead by 
10 or more runs. Well, that's a long time from now. That's it's only the bottom of now. the second. With one out and a three and one count. And there's a strike on the corner. Well, this is making up for us joking around about how efficient the first game was with first, Greg, Greg Brown against Valerani. That was a that was a tidy little ball game, and uh, this one is the exact opposite so far, anyway. First game was barely two hours. Wolfpack infield still in. And he walks him. So another walk. That's the fifth walk of the ball game. And here's Naha Garcia. He's up for his second time in the second inning. This is already his third at bat. And earlier in the inning, he walked and scored. And he takes it high and outside. Singled his first time up. Of course, was picked off. Bases full of Raptors. And Garcia pops it foul out of play. Raptors have had a ton of base runners in this inning. It's been all singles, but some good base running. All singles mixed in with some walks and a hit batsman. And There's a errors. ground ball single through the drawn in infield. Tahata scores. Here comes Preble. He'll score easily. And Garcia with a two-run single as Fogelman moves to third. Naha's making everybody forget about getting picked off in the first hit. That's for sure. <laughs> what pickoff? We were, we were kind of joking that the next hit went to the fence by Brooks and that that cost MC a run. It's okay now, Naha. <laughs> yeah, it's all right. <laughs> Don't beat yourself up. And another conference on the mound, and that's going to be it for Woodburn. So the second pitching change of the inning for Westmoreland, and we'll see who they bring in. And that's number 18, TJ Lux, who we thought might start this game. This is his fourth appearance, uh, all as a starter. Uh, so this is his first time working out of the pen. He's 2-0 and oh on the year. This is an 11-run 11, 11 inning? It's an 11-run inning. Is Kent Tagulvi or John Candelari out there? <laughs> Boy, pulling some names out of the past there. <laughs> They're pirates, same area. <laughs> They're what, 45 minutes away from Pittsburgh? Yeah, yeah. The Raptors still have something going here as we uh, watch Lux uh, complete his warm-ups. He's a freshman out of West Newton, Pennsylvania. And his... He's going to face Brock Antononi to uh, to start things off. I'm sorry, Brooks, Aaron Brooks. Again, not not the the, the most welcoming sight, Aaron Brooks. No, for the lefty out of the bullpen, Aaron Brooks has been absolutely mashing the ball. He had a a big double to center in the first, and uh, scored. He walked earlier this inning. And scored. So, scored a couple of runs already. And then, of course, in the first game, he had a double. And uh, 
and a walk. So another productive day for him. But he's been one of the hottest hitters uh, all month for the Raptors, hitting 424 in April and playing a nice left field. Saw him got a runner down uh, the other day in that Hagerstown game. And he's got the long legs. He's a tall guy. Runs real well. Six stolen bases. Played high school ball at DeMatha, which definitely prepares you for the next level. Yeah, he played uh, with Josh Tejada at DeMatha. And he pops it up behind second base. Second baseman calls it. And he makes the catch. Runner tags and scores. Fogelman. The Ra Raptors aggressive on the bases. So that'll go down as a sack fly for, uh, for Brooks. Makes it 13-1, Raptors. And that brings up Greg Brown. He had a single to center his first time up this inning. Drove in a run, scored a run. Also walked in the first. And of course, was the winning pitcher in the first game. So two outs now. Garcia at first base, two outs. Raptors have put 12 on the board in the second inning. Oof, that's a gap. And there is one into the gap and it's gonna hit the fence. And here comes Garcia. He's gonna score easily as Brown cruises into second base with an RBI double. Wow, Greg Brown, it's the second inning and he's walked, he singled, he's doubled. <laughs> he's, he's had a full game in, in, in the second inning alone. And so has uh, Antononi. <laughs> I know. Well, here comes Antononi for his second appearance in the inning. Wow, I, that was uh, some sort of a slow curveball. Looked like it broke over the plate, but he didn't. Get, Lux didn't get the call. But I can't figure that pitch out. Looked like it moved three different directions. That's a fastball in the corner. Lux is another lefty. So on the on the uh, the game, Antononi with a sack fly RBI, got on in an error, scored a run. Yeah, he really did help spark the rally here in the second inning with, with that uh, getting on via the air. This inning started a long time ago with uh, Josh Tejada. And there's a ground ball, second baseman makes a nice play, but Antononi beats it out as the throw gets away. Greg Brown will score. And that'll be an infield hit for Antononi. The error scores, or the uh, run scores on the error. Right. That's a 13 run inning. I wonder how many times MC has scored 13 runs in an inning. Not many this year, that's for sure. And probably not many ever. Yeah, I mean, right. 13 runs, that's a heck of an inning. 
So, Patrick Burke back up there. He's had a very nice game so far. Ground to second his first time up, but the last time up he hit a single to center that drove in two runs. And he also scored. This half inning has lasted about as half about half as long as game one lasted. Yeah, this has been uh, a lengthy inning. Meanwhile, Jamil Kanan uh, has not pitched in 45 minutes. Well, big old curve there. Finals are coming up. He could have gotten his books out, studied up a bit. Passed in a paper. And Burke stays alive. One ball, two strikes, two outs. The Raptors with a 14 run inning. Helped along by two errors by uh, Westmoreland. Handful of walks, so hit if Josh, batsman. If we get Josh Tejada up, he's, he's the culprit. <laughs> Didn't he start the inning off? That will be three at three bats. Three at bats in one inning. In one inning. If he gets up. In a, in a well-pitched seven-inning game, he might not get three at bats. No, uh, the first game, <laughs> most of the guys had two at bats. A nice pitch. And there's strike three. So the inning comes to a close, but not before the Raptors put 14 runs on the board. They lead it 15 to one after two. And uh, we're going to go to one of the uh, reminisce or one of the uh, 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 sound bites from uh, Tim Kirkshin. As we said earlier, he recently paid a visit to give a talk. He talked about his love of the game of baseball. I believe this with all my heart, that baseball is the best game. And I will argue this point with anyone, I love basketball, but baseball is the best game. For just all the strange coincidences that come up in baseball, all the strange quirky notes, which I love so much. For instance, Mark Teixeira had never hit a walk-off home run in his regular season career in the major leagues. And then the final home run that he ever hit was a walk-off grand slam against the Red Sox. And two days, three days later, that was it, he retired. It was unbelievable. And if you remember, that was the night that the Red Sox clinched the American League East because the Orioles or the Blue Jays had lost. So the one time he finally hits a walk-off homer, most career homers ever without a walk-off. The other team celebrates with champagne in the clubhouse, and Mark Teixeira is just sitting there having just hit a walk-off homer. Only in baseball can these things happen, and they happen all the time. Uh, that was a great memory there from uh, Tim Kirkshin. He, he's got story after story, Marcus, and of course, Mark Teixeira, one of your favorite players. That's right, and he's from Saverna Park, Maryland. Mark Teixeira and uh, some Orioles friends, fans, uh, wish that Mark Teixeira was a hometown boy, but he went from the Rangers to the Yankees, sorry. There might be some other players like Manny Machado coming to the Yankees in a couple of years, <laughs> but hey, that's baseball. Easy, easy there. Yeah, that's easy baseball. There. Or Bryce Harper, who knows? <laughs> Take your pick. All right, uh, Dakota Sox up, leading off the third against Jamil Kanan. Uh, our statistician, Evan Brown, just pointed out that every Raptor has at least one hit and has scored at least one run. So, and we're only in the top of the third. There's a ground ball to Antononi, nicely played. Throw over, nice Dig out there by Josh Tejada. Way to go, Josh Tejada. Nice glove work. Speaking of Mark Teixeira. Get another look at that one. Antononi made a nice play, a tough play. And Tejada dug it out of the dirt, kept the foot on the base. Well, 
Jamil Kanan can just throw strikes and let his guys make plays. That's the key right here is to throw strikes. There's a line drive into center or right field. That'll be the a hit there for uh, Stevenson. So Stevenson is on now. That brings up Valorani. He's over one. He flied out to center field his first time up. Well, that inning allowed Valorani's right arm to rest up even a little bit more. And of course, uh, Jamil Kanan is almost like he's starting another game. Really, that's what I was thinking. It's really, uh, you know, this is almost like his first inning. He warmed up. Yeah. <laughs> that's a, a, a very long rest. But again, uh, that ball is going to weigh. And Stevenson will move to second. And it's going to be a wild pitch. And if you want to get a dirty look from your coach, start throwing wild pitches when it's 15 to 1. Especially the Raptors coach, because that's not his game. No. And he will not hesitate to make himself clear. So Kanan now behind the count, 2 and 1. One thing about Kane, and he gets the ball and he throws. Uh, there's not much delay out there. And one of the things that our buddy Tim Kirchin talked about, you know, was speeding up the game and all that. Uh, he would like Kamen or Kanan. There's a ground ball to shortstop. Garcia off his knees, makes the throw to first for the out. But Tim Kirkchin wants the game to be sped up naturally by a guy like Kanan getting the ball and throwing it. And right. Not some of these, you know, artificial, uh, you know, Major League Baseball injected rules to speed the game. Right. I, I got to say, the, the, the free pass rule, the uh, – that doesn't save any time at all. I mean, a few seconds a game. You can have game, several games go by without an intentional walk. And it, this brings up Gerhard. He uh, struck out looking his first time up. So Stevenson now on third, there's a Line drive, foul and ball. it is foul. You know, TV time in between innings is a huge deal for Major League Baseball. Right. Uh, be, you know, we're here, and we don't always go to break, and these guys are right back out on the mound throwing. So, you know, what are you going to do about advertising? You're probably not going to be able to do much. You know, you'd have to cut down the, uh, uh, you know, the ad dollars, and I don't think anybody at that level in Major League Baseball is going to go for that. Not with the salaries being what they are. But you could literally go upstairs, grab a sandwich, and come back down and see the next pitch in the next half inning. Yeah. Now, they need – there are a lot of things they can do without these artificial things. Yep. Gerhardt is still looking for his first hit of the afternoon. It was 0 for in the first game. And he grounds it to second. Throw to first for the out. So that is the end of the inning as uh, Westmoreland does not score. And so after two and a half innings of play, the Raptors on top 15-1. Uh, let's go back to another uh, – uh, visit with Tim Kirkshen. Um, he shared some great stories, as we mentioned earlier. And uh, here's one that uh, might just surprise you. Apparently, Kyle Ripken is a competitive person. And the other thing that they all are 
is they have a competitive nature to them that no matter how much any of us played along the way, it's incomprehensible to understand what these guys will do to win no matter what, what the game is. Joe Orsalak played for the Orioles. He just told me this story recently. Joe Orsalak, I didn't realize this, was a great ping pong player in high school, like a three state champion in ping pong. So he recently played Ripken in ping pong and he beat him 24 games in a row. And Ripken would not leave the house until he won. And Orsalak looked at me and kind of laughed and he said, he beat me in the 25th game at two o'clock in the morning. And then he went home. That's who they are. That's a great story. <laughs> Cal Ripken, notoriously competitive at everything. He also told a story about how competitive Cal Ripken is when they're playing pickup uh, basketball. Yeah. Oh, well, Cal Ripken's a great basketball player, and Tim Kirkchen, you might not look like it, but is known, he's known as, well, the ESPN baseball guy, but he's also known a little bit more behind the scenes as a great basketball player. And Cal Ripken was, I don't know, he told us a story where he's, you know, he's talking trash to Tim Kirkchen and, ba and pick up basketball. <laughs> yeah, all night long, not just once or twice. So uh, we'll hear some more from Tim as the, uh, as the game goes on. Uh, it was it was a real uh, treat to get to uh, cover that event and also have a one on one interview with them. So and what is uh, Cal Ripken's about what six three six four? Yeah. And Tim Kirkchen's about what five four five five? Yeah, he's <laughs> he's not very tall, but I'll tell you what, Tim Kirkchen's one of the nicest guys you'd ever want to meet. He's just as genuine as can be. Uh, here's the guy who started it last inning. He's still working on a perfect day. He was two for two in the first game. He's one for one in this game with a walk. And uh, he scored twice in this game. So, I of, course, of course, he scored uh, in the first game as well. Came around on uh, Kanan's home run. So I'm glad we have Steve and Evan here with us because I stopped keeping track of who scored. So thanks, gentlemen. And both is and and Tahana finally goes down, goes down on a, on strikes there. So that's the first out he's made all day. That brings up uh, Darren Preble, who has scored a couple of runs. He was hit by a pitch, and uh, he singled to right, and uh, has an RBI and scored twice. So. Darren Preble with a very productive second game. Takes it in the dirt. The Raptors hung a big number up there in the second inning. We'll see if uh, their pitching staff can do what they should be expected to do, which is just Throw strikes and uh, and put this one to bed. And with the ten run rule, the Wolfpack have two more shots at cutting into that 15-1 scoreboard. That's right. The uh, NJCAA has a ten run rule for a seven inning game. It's five innings, ten or more runs, and for a nine inning game, it's seven innings. So if a team is ahead by 10 or more, that's it. Good look at Preble. And he's going to walk. Boy, we had a great look at that. So another walk uh, by the Wolfpack pitching staff. You see it low, well below the knees. So here's Chris Amparo. He was up twice last inning. And first time up, he had an RBI single, scored. His second time up, he struck out swinging. So he's one for two on the day. And he swings through that one. 
Amparo is a uh, John F. Kennedy High School grad right here in Montgomery County. Some good young athletes on the Raptors this year. And he laces that into the gap in left center field. Preble is going to hold at second as uh, Amparo with his second hit of the game. And now there are two on. There have been six walks in two and a third innings by the uh, Westmoreland pitching staff. That cannot make uh, Coach Draghi very happy. We get a, another look at the, uh, the single there by Amparo. That brings up Fogelman. He had a productive second inning as he hits one into the gap in the center fielder dives, can't come up with it. And Preble moves to third. They all had to hold up because of the possibility of a catch. Yeah, that number seven, Kevin Garcia. On he that laid dive. out for that wow. one. Let's take a look. That's a, that's, can separate a shoulder like that. Boy, that's for sure. He just gave up Oof. his body there. Uh, I don't like the looks of that. That makes my old body feel pain. Yeah, he's, a, he's walking a little gingerly out there and holding that his right arm in kind of an unnatural way. But he's staying in there. So Garcia has a single, a walk, and a single. And he scored... Two runs, two RBIs, very productive day. So the sacks are juiced as Fogelman uh, with his second hit of the day. The heck of an effort there by Kevin Garcia when your team is down 15 to one. That's right. That's some want there, folks. Garcia bounces a single into left. Preble will score, and Paro holds it third. Garcia's putting himself a, a second game together, let me tell you. After that pickoff, we shouldn't even talk about it anymore, considering no. it's 16 to 1. <laughs> But you got to think of something that's a negative. And, you know, if Dan Rasher is going to talk to Naha, you know, and, and they're going to go over the tape. <laughs> that brings up Aaron Brooks. That's that big slow curveball from Lux. Brooks says a double, a walk, and a sacrifice fly. He's knocked in a run, scored twice. So uh, another very productive day for a Raptor. This is pretty much all hands on deck when it comes to contributing to the offense. Everybody pitching in in here. You know, if you look at the stat sheet, last year there were some big boppers like you mentioned. This year, you're right, it is all hands on deck and it's very consistent up and down. Yeah, you see Darren Preble hitting down there at the bottom of the order. He's had a, a very productive day. Scored a couple of runs as an RBI. Been on every time up. Speaking so of production. Brooks goes down, and that brings up uh, Greg Brown. Single, double his last two at bats. This is. So, two outs here in the bottom of the third. Greg Brown with a single into right field. Amparo scores. Here comes Fogelman. He scores standing up. And the second baseman is shaken up. He dove for the ball. 
trying to come up with it. May have uh, take a look at that. Those are the two buddies from Miami in two straight plays, Garcia and Miranda, really taking some shots out in the field, but putting effort. And that's why they're that's why they're getting banged up. I mean, two straight full length dives for the Wolf Pack. Got to hand it to them. And that brings up Antononi. So 18 to one Raptors. Following up the, uh, the big inning in the second with another big inning. And Antononi flies out and that will end the inning. And our score after three complete innings of play, the Raptors on top, 18 to one. And uh, you know, uh, we're well into the spring season now and that means that track and field uh, is coming up on their national championships. As a matter of fact, they come up in just two weeks, May 11th through the 13th at Howard Community College, uh, just up the road. And uh, we're going to take a look at some, uh, some of the highlights from the track and field uh, season so far. As we get a look uh, there, uh, ever since Jamal uh, Schools took over this program, Marcus, this team has consistently made a real impact at Nationals. Last year, the MC men finished fifth in the country. The women finished seventh. And this year is shaping up as another successful one as more than a dozen Raptors have already qualified to compete at nationals. And they still have four more meets uh, left to qualify even more. So, so far, the Raptors have qualified for the men's and women's 4x100 relay, the women's 4x400 meter, re uh, meter relay, both the men's and women's individual 100 meter, 200 meter, 400 meter, 800 meter, and 1500 meter re uh, races, the men's 400 meter high hurdles, the men's and women's shot, long jump, women's discus, and men's javelin. So that covers a lot of events and should translate into a lot of points for both our teams come nationals time in just a couple of weeks. You know, you and I have been here long enough to Remember when people would ask, Montgomery College has a track team? Oh, they sure do now. It is fantastic. And you're right, Coach Schools has built a powerhouse. He really has. And uh, I'm looking forward to covering uh, the track and field nationals meet. Uh, as we get a look here at uh, Sheldon Roman uh, winning his heat just a couple of weeks ago um, in the 400 meters. And uh, Katie Stamets there winning her heat in the 400 meters and uh, uh, there's Leonard winning his heat in the 100 meters so a lot of talent on this team and I'm very excited to be going up uh, to Howard uh, Community College in a couple of weeks to cover the Raptors in the national championship tournament uh, track nationals is a real spectacle it's a, it's a lot of fun uh, Hard work to cover, but it's a lot of fun to cover. Because oh, yeah. There's a lot going on at the same time. That's oh, the yeah. problem for a one-man show like you often are. It uh, is, Yeah, there's got multiple events going on at the same time. You're constantly checking with the coach. Okay, who do we have in this event? Who do we have in that event? Uh, but it's a it's a terrific time. All right, the, the Raptors have a new pitcher in now. It's number 20, uh, Scott Car uh, Carell. And uh, tell us about us. Uh, tell us about him, uh, Marcus. Okay, it's Mr. Scott Carell. Three appearances this year. He's got one start. He's only pitched 4.2 innings. He's given up 12 hits, and he has a rather large ERA. But that's because he's only pitched four innings, and he got roughed up in, uh, you know, in one of those innings. So. Let's see if uh, if Scott can bring his ERA down, and if he gets through a clean inning, an ERA with only 4.2 innings pitched in a, a season, will come down quickly. Well, he is coming back uh, from a knee injury, uh, which has definitely hampered his uh, his season. He uh, he uh, tore the meniscus in his knee during the fall. 
football season that the Raptors uh, compete in and had surgery in January. So, you know, uh, just over four months after surgery, he's back out there on the hill. So, uh, obviously, uh, toughness is no problem for Scott Carell. That's for sure. I know that surgery well. Oh, I do too. <laughs> I can't imagine landing on that knee uh, uh, when you're pitching, uh, coming back from that. So, he does walk the leadoff hitter, and that brings – an immediate visit to the mound from Dan Rasher. As he walked uh, Cody uh, Stanosik to lead off the inning. And uh, Stanosik now has a perfect uh, game going. He uh, singled his first time up, scored, scored the only run of the game for... Um, for Westmoreland, and now he's on via the walk. Ackerman was hit by a pitch in his first at bat. Back there in the second inning, way back there in the second inning. It seems unreal that we're only talking about guys in their second at bats of the game when MC is on their third and fourth. Yeah, uh, four Raptors already have four at bats. There's a ground ball back up the middle, and it gets through for a single. So Ackerman on by a hit. Corral almost made that. that play. Got it through there. That brings up Garcia. He singled to left his first time up. Of course, made that diving try in center field uh, a couple of innings ago. He doubled in the first game and scored on a wild pitch in the first game. Of course, the Raptors, if you're joining us late, the Raptors won game one of this doubleheader, two to one. And this game has been a uh, the total opposite. We went from a very elegantly played, efficiently played first game to a uh, hitting fest here in the second game. Ball, two strikes, two on, nobody out. Curveball that does not break. So back to uh, Scott Carell. He's a military kid. His father has moved the family around the globe. He, he played his high school ball in Japan. Ground ball to second. Tag the bag for one, back over to first for the double play. Nice play. Nicely done. Antignoni, boy, he's showing us something today. Good ball player. He's a solid second baseman. So that's two outs now. The pitcher's best friend, the double play ball. And Carell mentioned that he loved the intensity of baseball in Japan. Yeah, he said it. He said they really play it at an intense level, even in high school. Of course, it's it's basically their national sport Absolutely. as well. Boy, he tied him up on that one. Yeah, it was a nice pitch. Uh, Miranda had a uh, sacrifice uh, his first time up. That's outside. Two outs here in the top of the fourth inning. And the 10 run rule looming. And that is strike three as Scott Carell, after a tough start, comes back to uh, close out the inning 
does not allow a run. So after three and a half innings of play, the Raptors on top, 18 to one. We'll be right back with the bottom of the fourth after this. Interested in career success? Get to Montgomery College and we'll get you going. You can earn an associate's degree in only two years. With three campuses, award-winning faculty, and multiple online learning opportunities, Montgomery College will empower you to set your course and succeed. Want to pursue a bachelor's degree? If you start at MC, you can save a third on total tuition costs of a four-year program. Apply today. And welcome back to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. And there is the iconic water tower. Tell us about that, Marcus. Well, that is a water tower. It's not a planetarium. It is not uh, a small planet Earth. Um, it was just repainted a few years ago. Um, it's called the Globe, of course. And uh, there, was, uh, there, there was actually some talk, and I have this on good information, to have that thing painted as a baseball. But I would say, uh, I guess, it's cooler heads prevailed and it remained a globe. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> Darn those and cooler not, heads. And I'm not going to say anybody uh, that who, who wanted it to be a baseball, but, you know, I'm, there's a couple of them sitting right here. Uh, <laughs> but it's a globe and it should be a globe. It should be. All right, we have a new pitcher in for Westmoreland. It is number 12. We've actually seen him in other positions today because this is uh, Dakota Sachs. Uh, he's played third base uh, in the first game, and he started at third base in this inning. And uh, see if we can find his uh, pitching stats. He has pitched uh, this season. He's made five appearances. And Marcus, you can run down his numbers for us. Okay. He's got two starts. He's 0-1, 16 innings pitch, 19 hits, giving up 17 runs, 12 strikeouts, 10 walks for an ERA of 8.27. So he comes in in the bottom of the fourth, and he is going to face uh, a, uh, a new player now for the Raptors coming in. Um, uh, number, number 18, eight. I got it, Jake Bahalski. Jake's hitting 250, 20 at bats this year, five hits. Got a couple of runs, a couple of RBIs. So Paholski in for Burke, and we just heard the umpire talk with our with our stats man, our uh, our scoreboard guy, and we hear something we don't hear that often. They just killed the DH. <laughs> so they're going basically they're going with a nine man nine man lineup, and because the pitcher uh, is going to hit for Westmoreland. For Westmoreland, of course. For Westmoreland, so. Uh, Sox is in now to pitch. Paholski in for uh, Patrick Burke. And so this is obviously his first appearance of the day. Did not play in the first game. And Paholski is a freshman out of uh, Sherwood High School. One of the stronger programs in Montgomery County. <laughs> That's correct. From top to bottom, that's a, that's a heck of a sports program. Yeah, they, they're strong in a lot of sports. And he hits a fly ball to deep center field, and it is out of here. Oh, Jake Paholski. Jake Paholski goes yard to left center field. Hello, Sherwood Warriors. <laughs> wow. So Jake Paholski hits the first home run of the day. And uh, he is greeted warmly at the plate there as he well should be. 
Boy, that fly ball was a mile high, and I was watching Garcia track it and track it and track it. And again, the jet stream, as I was noticing a little earlier, those uh, those flags out there are blowing uh, a little bit out towards uh, center and right center. So, you know, Jake really uh, got it up where it needs to be up on Windy Hill, and he hit it out. And that's his first home run of the season, and that brings up uh, Max Maloney now. Wow, how cool is that? So Maloney in for Tejada. Here's a good story. Max Maloney is the elder statesman on this team. He's 23 years old from Damascus, but he went to Salisbury, got his four-year degree at Salisbury, played a year of club ball, and now he's back in uh, in Montgomery, and he's going for another degree, but he's he's taking some classes at Montgomery College first before he goes to get his uh, before he gets his master's. So good yeah, for him. He, uh, he wants to be a physical therapist, so he's getting his exercise, picking up a few classes to uh, finish out his exercise science program. Then he's going to be applying to uh, to uh, physical therapy schools. He's also one of the funniest guys, if not the funniest guy on the team. Great sense of humor. Told me yesterday, he says, I don't have a filter. And I looked at him and I said, I can relate to that. <laughs> Pretty cool, though, to have your four-year degree and then still be able to play a seriously competitive level of college baseball oh yeah he's he's thrilled to be playing and he lines it to short and he's an out so we've got a two up two down inning going here and that brings up Preble and Darren's had a nice day he's a McDonough High School grad Hit by the pitch first time up and scored, singled and scored, walked and scored, scored three runs, and he's got an RBI. So he's all over the stat sheet in game two. And he's played a solid uh, right field in both games. So it is a 19-1 to Raptor lead, and barring unforeseen difficulties in the top of the fifth, we're going to have a uh, an NJCAA 10 run rule invoked. Are we knocking on wood on that? And there's a ground ball. It gets through. What do you think, uh, Marcus? Air, base hit? Base hit. Yeah, we'll give him take a base a look. hit. We'll give, we'll give him a base hit. Let's take a look. Yeah, it was a tough play for the first baseman and subsequently for the second baseman because of the first baseman's effort. We're going to be generous today. It's Sunday. It's 19 to 1. Chris Amparo up now. So Dan Rasher giving everybody a chance to uh, swing the bat in game two. There's a pop up to the right side. Second baseman calls it. He gathers it in for the out. Fogelman's been in the thick of things today in this 19 to 1 game. Scored three runs, a couple of RBIs. He's had a good ball game, as a lot of Raptors have. Let's 
Ground ball foul. Fogelman scored a couple of runs in this one. Been on every time up. Scored three runs. Got two ribbies as well. The ground ball to the uh, shortstop. Throw to second, and it gets away. And that's definitely an error. As Preble motors into third, so... Fogelman uh, continues his perfect ga uh, game. He's been on every time up. Wheels starting Good look to there fall at Darren off. Preble. Wheels starting to fall off a little bit for the Wolfpack here. Yeah, I think so. So that brings up Naha Garcia. He's This is his fifth at bat, and we're only in the fourth inning. Naha has had quite a game. Been on every time up. Scored a couple of runs, has a ribby. And again, he's uh, three for three with a walk. Bouncer back to the pitcher. This should end the inning, and it does. So the Raptors pick up one on Jake Paholsky's long, towering home run to uh, left center field. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be right back for the top of the fifth. The Raptors comfortably on top. Get to MC and we'll get you going. And welcome back to the Germantown campus of Montgomery College. Well, Michael, it's almost that time of year again, believe it or not. Commencement is right around the corner. Montgomery College Television will once again provide live coverage of the ceremony Friday, May 19th at 10 a.m. Now, if you're on the Comcast or RCN cable systems, you can watch commencement, commencement in HD on Comcast Channel 998 or RCN Channel 1058. On Verizon, you can watch in standard def on Channel 10. The broadcast will also be available to watch on Facebook Live and at montgomerycollege.edu slash commencement. And don't forget about social media, because if you're a graduate or if you know a graduate, make sure you use the hashtag, hashtag MCGrad2017 when posting on social media. Posts with the hashtag will be shown on the Jumbotron screens at commencement, and that is pretty cool when you see your tweet up there in front of thousands of people. So always a big day, probably one of the biggest, if not the biggest day of the academic year at Montgomery College. And again, that's coming up on May 19th, Friday, May 19th at 10 a.m. on the Rockville campus. So, but there are lots of ways to see it from the comfort of your own home or your uh, mobile device. That's correct. All right, so Scott Carell in here to hopefully close things out. And uh, he's facing Neal to uh, st start off the inning, Brady Neal. And the home run man, Pahulski, is at third base. And Neal's only had one at bat. He popped out to right field his first time up. Way back in the second inning. And that second inning was an epic second inning. As the Raptors just... 
Raptors just couldn't make an out. So Scott Carell in for his second inning of work. Got off to a little bit of a rough start last inning, but he closed it out nicely to uh, to keep the uh, Wolfpack off the board. And I noticed that when he came off, his teammates were particularly uh, boisterous uh, in their support of him. And I, I have a feeling it's due to the fact that uh, he's been coming back from that knee injury and they know how hard the guys worked. Oh, definitely. And it just shows, you know, you had a guy like Corral who hasn't pitched much. You got a kid like Paholski who doesn't play all that much. And he got a home run. And Corral gets out of the inning clean. I mean, that's just, that just makes his, uh, their teammates feel good just about this, about this program and supporting each other, basically. A real good look at Scott Corral. He was around the program last year. He had the red shirt. Uh, so this is his first year competing for the Raptors. And he gets a strikeout to start the inning off. So that's got to bring a smile to uh, Dan Rasher's face. And that puts us back up at the top of the order now. And Dakota Sachs. And he's 0 for 2 in this one. Carell's pitching with a purpose, moving the ball in and out. He's a big guy. Uh, and, you know, we're getting into that time of the year. If he can give them some innings uh, down the stretch here, that's really going to help uh, the Raptors. As we talked earlier, uh, the postseason coming up in a couple of weeks. The Region 20 tournament will be played at Prince George's Community College on the 13th and 14th of May. There's a fly ball to deep left field, and it's not coming back. As Dakota Sachs will touch them all. Well, you're right about the pitching depth, especially come tournament time. You know, teams with one ace don't necessarily win these tournaments. Teams with depth win these tournaments because uh, you can throw your ace on you know, game one, but you're going to come back and you're going to play the next day and you're going to play the next day if you're lucky. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a double elimination situation uh, in the Region 20 tournament. And uh, it does appear at the moment that Prince George's will be the number one seed. That's not definite. We still have a couple of weeks to go in the regular season. Um, but the Raptors needed these two wins uh, to move up in the seedings, and it certainly appears they're going to get them. There's a ground ball to short. Garcia. Makes it's, the routine play. And we're really happy, uh, not only because we get to do these games and it, it makes it interesting, but, you know, just as fans of Maryland Juco to have PG, you know, back in it. We've been we've been looking for that rivalry. Now, sure, when, when MC plays Hartford or MC, you know, plays Hagerstown, that's, that's big-time baseball, you know, and we love that. Uh, but PG is the natural rivalry with Montgomery, and when these two teams can battle it out, now that makes it fun. Well, and, and when you look at all the sports played, mm -hmm. PG is is MC's top rival in just about every one of them. Soccer, certainly. And is that's the way it should be. It really should. Basketball, mm -hmm. certainly, both men's and women's. Um, and, and what's been lacking is the rivalry in baseball, mm -hmm. and, and it's back now. Basketball has been fighting over kids for years. Oh, for sure. Come to the program. And, and those games are some of the most intense games. I think maybe the most intense are the men's soccer games between MC and PG. Those are, the intensity level is through the roof. So here's Verchuk. And he... In the first game, he walked, he popped out, and there's a ground ball to second base, and this should be it. There's the throw to first, and that is it. As the Raptors take game two of the doubleheader by a score of 19 to two, that completes the sweep of the doubleheader over Westmoreland. The Raptors take them both 2-1 and 19 to two, 
as we get a good look at the Raptors as they go through the handshake line. A uh, solid win, a uh, great day for the Raptors, very happy, uh, Dan Rasher. And uh, we're going to take a quick break, and then we actually we're not going to take a quick break. We're going to stay right here. And uh, Marcus, uh, uh, quick uh, quick uh, second game here. You know, 19-2, uh, to two, you see that. But what I'm really thinking about is game one and Greg Brown uh, really – being tough on the mound. Didn't have great stuff, but he won. Uh, a big home run from uh, Aaron Brooks, and they win 2-1. This game was a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, we knew coming in that the Wolfpack didn't have depth in their pitching staff, and, you know, the Raptors made them pay in game two. Uh, but this is this is a good couple of games on, on sophomore day for the MC Raptors. They needed these two ball games. And there you see the two head coaches, and I'm sure Coach Draghi is saying, hey, you got us uh, today. You got us in the second game. They're good friends. Uh, they've known each other for a long time. They have a lot of respect for each other. You could see that the Raptors, even though they seem to be hitting everything that came their way, they didn't overdo it on the bases. They didn't try to rub it in. But it was just one of those games when everything went right for the Raptors uh, at the bat. And, uh, and, and again, Back to that first game, uh, tremendous job by Greg Brown, and then the big t two run home run from uh, from Kanan to win it. Oh, you're right. It was it was Jamil Kanan, Jamil Kanan. I said Aaron Brooks. Nope, yeah. it was Kanan. That the, was a big, big home run. run. And he, you know, he started uh, game two and he pitched well. Yes, he did. So not only did he hit the game winning home run, he he came in and he started. He basically set the table. Well, the offense for the Raptors set the table, um, but then he you know he gave into his uh, you know to his relief pitching staff uh, but yeah he was the big basher in uh, game one so sophomore day here at montgomery college ends on a very happy note as the raptors take both games of the double header over their region 20 rival uh the westmoreland wolf pack so for everyone on the very hard working montgomery college television crew folks if you only knew what we went through today to bring you these this game uh, a big shout out and congratulations to everybody on the MC crew. Congratulations to the Montgomery College Raptors and Dan Rasher and his coaching staff. So for my partner, Marcus Rosano, I'm Michael Brown. Thanks so much for watching MC Baseball on Montgomery College Television. <laughs>